This is a teardown of a Cisco Nexus N2K-C2248TP-1G switch. And I don't really understand what story is of this switch. It's a fabric extender switch, which I kind of skimmed through the technical documentation, but it was over my head. I think it has something to do with the fact that there's like a main controller switch. And this is like a switch that sits further down the line. But despite being a 48 port gigabit switch, it's uh, only worth like $35. And at that point, I make more money scrapping this and selling the bits and pieces. So that's what's going to happen. And there's a few more screws in this than I was planning on, so I probably should have done this off camera first, cracked it open. But oh well. <laughs> Oops. Alrighty. Uh, so the funny thing about these switches um, is I have an offer for fifteen dollars a piece for them from a buyer of mine, but. I believe, from what I've seen at least, there's more money to be made parting these out and scrapping them. I'm kind of curious what the inside looks like. I think the board in this is actually going to be pretty small since it doesn't require too much intelligence. I believe I've tore some of these apart before, but it's been a while. I think on some of this higher end stuff, they uh, must get paid by the screw. <laughs> I hit the side off camera just because it'll be easier that way. But there's like another dozen or so screws on the side that I have to take off as well. I believe there's some front screws also. I'll well grab the fan tray while I'm at it. Nope. There we go. Extra tight. There we go. This particular one that I'm tearing down doesn't come with power supplies, so I don't know what they look like. Usually just look like power supplies though. There's the fan tray. Three forty millimeter fans. I will be selling that. Ironically, I'd probably be asking more for that fan tray than people are with the switches. So it means they'll probably never sell, but you never know. It's to ship that. Um, I don't even have a good box size for that right now. I would guess it's going to cost me $15 to ship that. So for it to be worth my time, I'm probably going to charge at least $35 for the part. <laughs> oh man. It's just how it goes. Either, either I need to make money on the stuff I'm selling, or I'm just going to write, throw it in the recycling pile and get a penny's worth of scrap out of it. But it doesn't cost me much to list or uh, store, so might as well try. Although the smart thing to do is if you need a fan tray, just buy a whole other switch. <laughs> Oh man, the funny thing about this is there's also screws on the front, so it never ends. Luckily when I scrap these, I'll be using my drill and I won't be doing it by hand, but uh, it's a little too loud for the video. I didn't look. Um, to see if this has SFP plus or just regular SFP ports in the front, which would be kind of interesting. I'd assume they'd have to be SFP plus just so you have enough bandwidth between the controller switch and then all the ports on this switch though. 
I don't know. Once you get into the weird um, high-end server stuff, it just gets so much more complicated. And I don't have the skills to understand it. Oof. Oh, almost done with all the side screws. And then we get to see what's under the cover. Another funny thing about this switch is it has an HDMI port on it. And I'm not sure what it's for. If it's programming or if it's for stacking. I have a Dell switch on the test bench right now that uses HDMI ports for stacking ports. And... It's, I mean, it's smart, I guess. I mean, it's just weird. Um, I'm not even sure who Dell farms out their switches to, because Dell doesn't make their own networking switches. Um, a lot of other stuff, too, that Dell doesn't make, which is kind of funny. Like their racks, I don't believe they make their racks. I believe their racks are rebranded APC racks. The printers that Dell makes, or sells, I should say, those, if memory serves correct, are Lexmark printers. I think even in some of the older models, the toner was interchangeable, which is kind of funny. But I don't know if that's the case nowadays. This would have been like Windows 2000. But I think at that point, Dell didn't have any design input, so they were just literally rebadged like smart laser printers. Versus now, I think Dell kind of determines some of that stuff when, when it comes to design and whatnot. Alrighty. Alright, that's a bigger board than I was expecting, I guess. So you got some wires coming out here to something. Uh, just status lights for the uh, power, I guess. Wouldn't be for the power supplies because it only goes to one side. It's just gonna be hard to get in frame, probably, but yeah, there we go. And I think I'm not gonna be able to probably do these very easily. I might have to pull the motherboard. Oh, nope, that does not want to come off. Those are, uh, I feel like they're epoxyed on. Also, that's interesting. Some of the uh, anodization got rubbed off at one point. See the exposed aluminum on the uh, heat sinks there. Not sure what that's about. Um, I'll be back once I grab some tools, I guess. All right, got a few different options here. Hopefully I can uh, remove these without hurting myself. As was suggested, I'm going to try twisting off. <laughs> I can hear something bad. Oh, I, that's that's just the sound of aluminum. I thought maybe I heard the sound of um, pulling traces off the board. should be wearing gloves while I do this, but uh, ah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty well epoxyed on, unfortunately. Probably would have to chemically remove that thermal epoxy to see what that chip is. Alrighty. Let's try a hammer. <laughs> Holy cow, look at all that thermal epoxy around there. Oh, and that's hard as a rock. Um, this is scrape. So... Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I'll probably have to, uh, I don't know. Scrap is not going to be happy with this board if it's missing all these chips. And there's no way I'm going to be able to remove them, the heat sinks, without uh, taking the chips off with them. Ouch! Got my knuckle. Yeah, let's see, there goes another chip. So that sucks. So that either means I'm going to get paid less in scrap or uh, something. The other thing I could do... I'm a little loud. This is a fair warning. No. 
I'll probably try thermal shocking it and seeing if I can uh, get everything to break free that way. Um, no good way to do that without taking the board off. So I guess I'll pull the board real quick here. It's only another dozen plus screws. Somebody totally got paid by the screw. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even really get the reasoning behind so many screws. I don't know if it's like a uh, thermal expansion thing where they're concerned that the board's going to flex as the temperature changes and it's going to pop chips off. I don't know. It just seems excessive. be counting. <laughs> Let's see, that's seven after this screw. And 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 screws holding this motherboard down. Holy cow. On top of the other 30 or so screws holding the uh, case on, not counting the uh, additional eight screws for rack mounting hardware. <laughs> oh man. They really, they really did a good job screwing this in, I guess. So what I'm doing, which I don't think I explained, is I gotta take the board out to remove the heat sink on the main CPU. And the reason I gotta take the board out is because if I try to pry that heat sink off and shear off the little pins that hold it down, they'll go flying everywhere which I would normally do on my workbench in my warehouse, but I don't want to do it in here just because they'll go everywhere and make a mess. I'll have pieces of plastic and then the springs all over the place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this board out and I'll flip it upside down. I'll push the pins down so they stick further out the bottom of the board and then I'll cut them with my side cutters. Which honestly is how I should normally do it in general, because I have gotten popped in the eye by uh, trying to bust one of those off once, because I wasn't wearing my safety glasses. Luckily I went to the doctor and he said everything was fine, so it's kind of whatever, but um, yeah. Really should be wearing safety glasses anytime you're tearing this stuff apart, as stupid as it sounds. Um, at least from a scrap standpoint. From a teardown standpoint, maybe not so much, but it still doesn't hurt if you don't already wear glasses to put on a pair of safety glasses. Alright, that's screw number 20. I don't see any Loctite on them, but man, they were screwed down nice and tight. So I guess, I'll look at the bottom of the board. I mean, I really wasn't expecting to see much. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, okay. These are indicator lights for the bottom, on the bottom of the board for the uh, ports. And there's holes along the bottom of the front that would uh, light up corresponding with the port. Otherwise, yeah, it's just a bunch of passive stuff on the bottom. So, if I can find the hole with my finger, I don't know if I'm able to do this very easily. Alternative thing I can do. I can kind of stretch it out. Ooh! <laughs> that loud snap you heard was a combination of the plastic snapping and the uh, spring that holds the heat sink down and, ugh, pressure. That is violent. Oh, even with this pointing upside down for the uh, housing to contain it, it sounds so violent. Messed up on that one. So I can just poke it through. Everything's a hammer. <laughs> Ooh, violence. Hey, look, heat sink fell right off. It also appears to have 
not really thermal epoxy, but it's really sticky. It's kind of a shame I don't make stuff. A lot of these heat sinks I uh, recycled. Probably do some really neat stuff with it. It has some pre-drilled holes and stuff. Maybe, uh, I don't know, custom amplifier heat sink or something. Whatever people use. Motor drivers. But, uh, yeah, I just... I just go to the aluminum pile. I don't really know anyone. Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to clean that up or not. If it doesn't break down into rubbing alcohol, yeah, it's not going to. The alternative is kerosene, which I actually think would be kind of fun. Oh, man. I just happen to have it right next to me on the floor because I like to live life on the wild side. Also, I use kerosene way too much for... A computer person. It's just so good. It's such a good good solvent for uh, breaking down adhesives and stuff. I'm not a hundred percent certain if this will work. Let's soak in for a little bit. I guess I can tour the rest of the board while we're waiting. Not much to see there. I suspect the chips under these heat sinks are probably going to be Broadcom chips, like usual. It's just, you know, they shear right off the board because that thermal epoxy is very hard. Looks like uh, some Micron memory chips around this chip. And unfortunately, no, no easy way to tell what it is. So these little pinouts here... Hmm... I was going to say they look like potential SATA headers, but there's not that many pins on a SATA port. Yeah, I don't know. Probably, actually, it probably is. Yeah. It could be... No. I was going to say it could be like the HDMI port at the front, but internally, but I don't know what those would be. It's interesting. I kind of thought maybe it's SATA ports at first, but I don't know. Either way, it's whatever, I guess. Got your power supply input. Not much on here for power regulation coming in, so it must be putting out the voltage it needs right off the bat. And what's funny is this one over here has even less components. Maybe it's because it's going directly into all this, though. But yeah, this is where a lot of the power regulation is being done. I got what appears to be some flash memory. Three different chips. I guess I can rotate them if you want to read the part numbers. One appears to be an Intel. The other two are expansion. Hmm. But I think this is sat long enough where if it's going to break down, it's going to break down. So, let's see if it, my favorite kerosene trick worked. Oh yeah, look at that. Got most of it. Um, some of the thicker stuff, it didn't, uh, didn't really do a good job. But, uh, that's, uh, that's whatever. Figured it's either going to be a custom Cisco chip or something Broadcom related. Cisco Portola. Hmm. Looks like part number is 2FN4-0003. Made in the Philippines. So, you know. Um, but, yeah, I guess that covers it. Not really much else to see. So, hopefully that was interesting, and thanks for watching.